Failure is another indie entry into 2023's Fright Fest London, and it stars Ted Raimi, brother to director Sam Raimi. It also has a unique style to its filmmaking. Now, even though this premiered at Fright Fest, it's not a horror, but instead it's a character-driven drama. So is it going to be something that you want to put on your watch list? Jenk has a big debt with the bank and is given one hour to choose between financial ruin or murder in order to protect his family. As the hour progresses, he finds his home and phone invaded by multiple characters, pulling him in different directions, gradually adding to his distress and his unraveling. So the first thing to know about this movie is that it is shot in a single continuous take. Not edited to appear as one take, but really is one single unending scene. It's 87 minutes and it takes place in a solitary setting, making it feel very much like a stage play. Now, I really applaud writer-director Alex Cajon for his just ambitious vision for this movie. We follow Ted Raimi as James, just around his house as he deals with situations that arise with his family, all while he has to then make a business decision on whether or not to sell his family's long-held factory in order to settle the mounting debt that he's incurred. Now, the camera work is a little bit too shaky for my tastes because it's handheld and it never switches cameras. It's not that handheld cinematography is bad or poor quality, but it can become noticeable or distracting if the shaking gets to be too much. Now, in an action movie, it can work a lot better because typically the camera is following characters, and so the shaky motion is inherent and it feels natural within the scenes. But in this slow-paced drama, it feels out of place, especially because it's also a single setting. Now, the camera, it also uses a lens that's not a zoom, which I don't think is uncommon, but again, when there's only one camera at play within the visual storytelling, any close-ups or zooms involve the camera operator to physically move towards or away from the subject. Now, sometimes this is cool because we get way into a character's personal space, like, I mean, almost uncomfortably close. And then other times we're hanging out in the back of a room while the scene unfolds about 10 feet in front of the camera. So, I mean, we're more like eavesdroppers at that point. Now, none of this is enough on the filmmaking, but it can get tiresome when it's overly noticeable. The dialogue in this feels like it's semi-ad-libbed, but not quite. Like, the story's a bit unfocused in the delivery because characters seem to be searching either for their lines or the direction that they're supposed to take the scene. And it's not like they can just stop in the middle and then ask for their line and then pick up from there. It's a one-take film, just like a stage play. So if they do end up making a mistake, the actors, they all have to just keep going and act if it was on purpose. Now, there are several times throughout the movie that felt slightly delayed, like the actor was trying to remember what their next lines were. Now, sometimes it came off as pondering. Other times, it came across as forgetful. For the story itself, the script thrusts us into the world of Raimi, having this discussion with unseen people, discussing business, and at the same time, informing us of the mounting debts that his business has and the financial strain that it's creating. And we learn that he has multiple employees at this factory and that it's been a family business, so the stress and the pressure of failing at it seems insurmountable and then unthinkable. The phone conversations work pretty well within this, especially because half of the time they're on speakerphone, so we don't even have to imagine what's being said. And it helps to fill in the gaps of the story, which I think is really important because we're not given much introduction at all to our characters, and then we're not really given the opportunity to get to know them, let alone decide if there's someone that we want to root for or not. I do believe the story thinks we should be much more invested in what is happening to Raimi's character than we actually get. I found it hard to connect with him because of the lack of development. There's a point where he has an encounter with an employee, and while the actions we witness may fit with his personality, it's not been established prior, so they feel very abrupt. Not shocking, just more like lacking context. There's also a sequence that involves part of Raimi's family and a fitting for a wedding. Now, this scene, it is absolutely unnecessary, and it leads nowhere. And maybe it was to include some of the filmmaker's friends. I mean, I don't know. But there are only two very small outcomes from this drawn-out scene, and they both could have been accomplished more effectively and in a shorter amount of time. Now, Raimi is trying to keep these guests from seeing something. So there's some tension that's trying to be built, but there's no tension created. But the other element is that he has an informative conversation with his daughter. Now, this scene is a bit heavy on the exposition, but it still helps to build out the drama more and provides us insight into the characters. Now, the daughter's presence, it also could have still worked to accomplish the previous scene where Remy didn't want something to be found or seen. I mean, in fact, by just having the daughter present, 
I think it would have even created more natural tension because a daughter presumably could have free reign in the house to go anywhere they wanted, as opposed to just this random guest that had arrived. Now, this may seem like a nitpick, but the sequence with the wedding people, I mean, it's absolutely annoying and it's grating and it serves zero purpose other than to pad the time. Now, there are a few other progressions within the storytelling that make sense as story beats, but they still feel rushed in their timing. Now, it's meant to create urgency and even maybe some fear or stress for the characters, but because they do come about so quickly, these sequences feel more executed out of convenience rather than a plot device. Now, there's one aspect within this film that I really loved, but I wish it would have been examined and exploited more. There's a dude that Raimi constantly has a conversation with, and I appreciate the meaning that it conveys, but it isn't nearly as poignant as it could be had more character development been established. When all is said and done, the story feels unfinished, and not that I'm looking for a clear resolution and every single thing to be nicely wrapped up and explained, but from an audience standpoint, why did I watch this? What was the actual payoff to witnessing this story? We pick up in the middle of something and then are left before it ends. It's just strange and it feels incomplete. So overall, there's a very intriguing character study hidden in here somewhere but the director seems a little more keen on figuring out how to accomplish the gimmicky one take rather than developing the narrative to be nuanced and impactful. Ted Raimi can be mesmerizing, but the shaky cam, uncertain dialogue delivery, and lack of character development really hamper the connection we feel to the character. The ambition to execute this film is wonderful, but it shouldn't overshadow the actual story at play. This has potential and isn't quite what the title implies, but it's also not a stellar entry into the character drama genre. There's no sex or nudity, a lot of profanity, and some violence. I give failure two and a half out of five couches. So is there anything that you're looking forward to seeing in the next few weeks? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.